Thanks so much for inviting me to be part of this significant uh, panel and a, a quick trigger warning for the content which relates to sexual violence. The global porn industry runs primarily on the backs of women and girls and disseminates sexual exploitation primarily online. It is a mammoth dispenser of sexualized violence and misogyny, the world's most powerful sexual groomer. It is also the world's largest department of education. Many titles feature the sexual abuse and rape of teen and underage girls. When the war in Ukraine broke out, the most popular search term on porn sites was for Ukrainian girl. The mass dehumanization of women and girls in mainstream porn leads to an epidemic of violence against them. We are confronted with big tech at its worst. Young men are learning to take pleasure in torture and humiliation videos fed a diet of rape porn and racist sexual abuse. School boys entertain each other with gang rape videos and girls are reduced to porn fantasy sex props. The global research establishes porn as a driver of violence against women and girls. This is recognised in Australia's new National Plan of Action to address violence against women. It states, pornography often depicts physical and verbal aggression towards women, male dominance and female submission and non-consensual behaviours. Greater pornography use is associated with less progressive attitudes about gender roles, with the belief that women are sex objects, and with acceptance of myths about rape. It perpetuates sexist, misogynistic and degrading views about women. These links are also made in a 2020 paper titled Pornography, Young People and Preventing Violence Against Women, published by Our Watch, which is Australia's peak body addressing violence against women. My latest book, He Chose Porn Over Me, Women Harmed by Men Who Use Porn, documents the lived experience of 25 women at the hands of compulsive porn using partners. Many were subjected to sexual aggression and violence. Frontline worker Di McLeod, who is the director of the Gold Coast Centre Against Sexual Violence in Queensland, told me, in the past few years, we have had a huge increase in intimate partner rape of women from 14 to 80 plus. The biggest common denominator is consumption of porn by the offender, with offenders not able to differentiate between fantasy and reality, believing women are up for it 24 seven, ascribing to the myth that no means yes and yes means anal, oblivious to injuries caused and never ever considering consent. We have seen a huge increase in deprivation of liberty, physical injuries, torture, drugging, filming, and sharing footage without consent. A UK study found that girls were being coerced into anal sex they didn't want and found painful. Why did they do it? Because boys, quote, wanted to copy what they saw in pornography. A UK report by the Children's Commissioner released just this January titled A Lot of It Is Actually Just Abuse, Young People and Pornography, states depictions of degradation, sexual coercion, aggression and exploitation are commonplace and disproportionately targeted against teenage girls. The report found young people are frequently exposed to violent pornography depicting coercive, degrading or pain-inducing sex acts. 79% had encountered violent pornography before the age of 18. Frequent users of pornography are more likely to engage in physically aggressive sex acts. The report also found young people 16 to 21 are more likely to assume that girls expect or enjoy sex involving physical aggression than don't. And girls were significantly more likely than boys to have experienced a violent sex act, which could be defined as aggressive, coercive or degrading. These porn inspired behaviours spill over into TikTok. Kink talk, which is a popular genre within TikTok, has 6.2 billion views on a platform where more than 30% of users are minors. 
There you'll see teens promoting choking, whipping, bondage, sadism and submission. A 15-year-old is depicted fantasising about being choked. And growing in popularity is the consensual, non-consensual known as con, non, con genre, also known as rape play. The eroticization of the girl child for pedophilic fantasies is now mainstreamed on social media. We at Collective Shout track the predatory activities of men on the pages of underage girls. Instagram is essentially a predator's playground and we call on sexual social media platforms to stop facilitating them. Young women share their lived experiences with me in schools most days. They describe sexual harassment on a daily basis. They're touched, groped, demanded to send nudes. They're threatened with rape if they don't. Recently, girls were telling me boys were threatened to rape their mothers and even their sisters if they didn't send an image. The girls are subjected to boys making moaning, sexual moaning and groaning noises at them in the classroom, on the school bus, at the school camp, in the schoolyard. It's a daily occurrence. Boys want to enact the signature acts of pornography on them. More girls tell me that boys expect to choke them. Quote, he put his hands around my neck without even asking. These everyday sexual affronts tell us a great deal about the how entrenched the objectification of girls is. They also tell us how widespread is the callousing of our young men, the erosion of empathy, the decay of civil behaviour and the social arson caused by mass porn saturation. Girls ask me to pass on messages to boys. Here's just a few of them. Please ask the boys to stop telling us about the porn they watched last night. Please ask the boys to stop ranking us according to the bodies of porn stars. Please ask the boys to stop rubbing up against us in corridors. Please ask the boys to stop sending us dick pics and pressuring us for nudes. And please ask the boys to stop making sexual groaning and moaning noises at us. My colleague James, not his real name, a research scientist at Oxford, has written profoundly about the need to de-radicalise boys from porn. Immersion in dehumanising online subcultures from the age of 11 resulted in, quote, a radicalisation behind laptop screens and smartphones that preaches the objectification, dehumanisation and hatred of women and normalises sexual harassment, rape and child abuse. James had to be, rebuild his ethical framework Quote, I had to start seeing women as human beings again and not just as living sex dolls. James is a sign of hope. Growing numbers of men like him are speaking out against porn's toxic scripts. More young people recognise porn culture is making them sick. They are seeking deeper emotional and community connections. I see more teen girls refusing to comply, realising they have a right to stand up for themselves. They have a right to say no. Growing numbers of this new generation are signing up to activist movements like Collective Shout for a World Free of Sexploitation, which I founded with women activists 14 years ago. This is where I can at last show a positive side of online technology, primarily social media, where most of our victories are won. We've had erot billboards eroticizing violence against women taken down, sexist slogans removed from camper vans, sexualized clothing and toys removed from the shelves. Following a global campaign, MindGeek, which is the parent company of the mammoth porn dispenser that is Pornhub, was hauled before Canadian Parliament's Ethic Committee last year to give account for rape videos, non-consensual image sharing and content involving minors to be posted on its platform. There are now more than a hundred civil actions being run on behalf of victims thanks to this campaign with our global partners, age verification, proof of age protections to help protect children from porn exposure are being taken up in the UK, Italy, Spain and four US states and hopefully Australia. This is an acknowledgement that the vested interests of the porn industry should not be put before the welfare of children. We've pressured big tech companies to remove child sexual exploitation material uh, Twitter has added a tool to report child exploitation. We've got child sex abuse dolls removed from major e-commerce platforms such as Alibaba and Made in China. These are lifelike, anatomically correct, custom-designed children, toddlers and babies. Uh, we've had them removed. We're still working on Etsy. We've also got Instagram to remove eight child sex doll accounts. Our campaigns in Australia and globally are 
gaining momentum. We'd love you to join us in our quest for a world free of sexploitation. Please join us, collectiveshout.org. Thanks so much.